simply put, it doesn't get any better than this in college basketball. A sellout crowd here at Gamble Pavilion on the University of Connecticut campus. 8,241 and then some have come to see the top two teams in women's basketball. It is fitting that we have a dream matchup for our Martin Luther King holiday game. Top ranked Tennessee and number two Connecticut. Uh, I think this is the biggest game of my career. Uh, we got a chance to do something that no, nobody in Connecticut basketball history has been able to do, and that's be number one in the country. And, and if one, this dream for me comes true, I'll be very happy. It, it's, it's a game that we'll always remember. Uh, I hope somebody makes a three at the buzzer to win. And I really don't care which way it goes, just because that's the kind of game I want to be in today. We echo those sentiments. Hello again, everyone. I'm Robin Roberts. Big Monday getting started a little earlier than usual here on, on ESPN with this Tennessee-Connecticut matchup. Uh, two teams that many expect to see again in April at the Women's Final Four in Minneapolis. For Tennessee, they have not been there in three years to the Final Four, and they have one simple goal this year. Their motto, one team, one goal, and that one goal the 1995 Women's Final Four in Minneapolis. Mimi Griffin is joining me for today's big game. And Mimi, Pat Summit arguably has the most talent she's ever had in her 21 years at Tennessee. They've had some costly injuries, forcing some players to really step up. Robin, two players to focus on. One is junior point guard Michelle Marciniak. She's lively and creative on offense and really provides the spark that they need. She provides this team with a personality. And if Marciniak does that, then it's Dana Johnson, the inside center senior for this team, that provides the attitude, that get-out-of-my-face attitude that this team needs to be successful. Tennessee wants to establish their inside game early, and Dana Johnson's the girl to do it. When you think about Connecticut, Rebecca Lobo immediately comes to mind. She has done it all. She can score, she can rebound, but she is truly an unselfish player, a team player. You won't find a more complete player. She can post up with the best of them at 6'4", yet she can also pass, dribble, and shoot as well as any guard in the country. That's what makes this Connecticut team so tough to beat is the way Rebecca Lobo includes her teammates in the offensive effort. A good reason why they're undefeated. Both are undefeated number one versus number two eight thousand here at the university of connecticut to watch this fine matchup hope you're ready at home back here at gamble pavilion robin roberts along with mimi griffin number one versus number two both come into this game undefeated let's take a look at the tennessee lineup brought to us today by pert plus a very talented lineup for Pat Summit, Nikki McRae, the senior, UT's best defensive player, and a player of the year candidate. And they will go up against Gino Oriema's Huskies. And you see Jamel Elliott. We have the tip-off already underway as we begin action here at Gamble Pavilion. Connecticut controlling the tip and the steal quickly by Latina Davis. And just like that, you have to watch out for that quickness of Tennessee, Mimi. And as you would expect, Tennessee is starting out in their player-to-player -player defense, very aggressive. One of the things that Gina Wariyama concentrated on yesterday at practice was don't pick up your dribble. Their defense gets even more effective as soon as the ball is dead. The hustling Marciniak with the turnover, causing the turnover. You know, Robin, everyone talks about how tough Tennessee's schedule has been. On the other hand, Seton Hall has not really been challenged yet this year. This is going to be a good test for them. And Dana Johnson cannot get it to go. Connecticut on the break. Jen Rosati going hard to the goal. Can't get it to go. Lobo with the rebound. Doesn't fall. And, the, and Davis rips down the rebound, quickly getting it down court. Nikki McRae, the senior. This Tennessee team is reminiscent of the UNC team last year, our national champions in 1994. They combine quickness and physicalness, which is a deadly combination. Connecticut already down by four. Early going. Rosati in. Oh, excellent pass from Walters to Jamel Elliott. They move the ball so well. Both post players, Lobo and Walters, are great passers. Davis again. Too hard. Elliott with the rebound. I think one of the things Connecticut's going to need to do early is to establish their running game. They get so comfortable when they're able to run the ball, and especially it helps them in the half court as well. 
Inside again to Walters. And a foul is called on Dana Johnson. We talked yesterday about how the referees let them play is going to be a key factor here. Tennessee is used to being very physical, especially inside with Dana Johnson. Connecticut has not seen that yet this year, and if the referees keep them from touching one another, that's going to be a problem for Tennessee. And so Connecticut will inbounds under their own goal. Rosati looking for three. Connecticut with some full court pressure falling back into their 2-3 zone. They're going to try to let Tennessee establish their outside game rather than their inside game. Look at the way they're collapsing on Dana Johnson. But she kicks it out to Tiffany Johnson. Too hard. Gets her own rebound and gets the shooter's roll. Just her first basket. Quickly. Low ball for three. shoot the three that way. Tennessee quickly comes down. McCray, no. And crashing the boards. This is the 25th time that number one and number two have squared off in the history of the Associated Press Bowl. Number one has won 12 of the past 24. Tennessee knows something about being in this situation. They're seven and five in their 12 matchups number one versus number two so they're used to these big games for connecticut if they win they'll be number one the first time in school history one of the things about tennessee this year is they've had nothing but big games every game lobo too hard but connecticut controls the ball a cutting rosati and that was something pat summit was concerned with Pat Summit stressed yesterday, don't let the high post get the ball. It is too hard to defend. This team backdoors you to death. That's why this team is so tough to stop, because there isn't one player that you can stop and stop the whole team. You, they have five players in double figures, Robert. Already Dana Johnson's second foul. Rosati steps to the line already with five points. Connecticut up by five. Robin Gino Oriema told us that he felt his players might be a little too excited with the adrenaline flowing and not, not start this game strong yet. They're proving him wrong. Latina Davis. Vonda Ward kicks it out to Davis. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. Davis trying to make things happen, but she's out of bounds. It's Connecticut's ball. That was one example of why Connecticut is leading the nation in field goal percentage defense, allowing teams to only shoot 29% from the floor. And the Keisha Sales comes in, the big freshman for Connecticut. Sales with the ball. underneath and Jamel Elliott trying to get position is called for the foul and she's the most physical of the Huskies out there and on the six, team at six feet I think she was trying to post up Latina Davis at five six to try to take advantage of her height Connecticut on 11-2 run but it's Tennessee with the ball Connecticut in there man the man defense to see the post players Lobo and Walter stay home or in other words stay in the paint they're not going to come out and guard the post players they'll allow them to shoot from the outside Johnson in trouble but gets it to McRae 10 seconds left on the shot clock McRae too hard but Davis comes down with a rebound you know Robin this is pretty much the way you see every team team try to play Tennessee is give them the outside shot try to shut down inside Connecticut with some great defense. Marciniak for three. And two. 
Tiffany Johnson will be called with the foul. This is another area that Connecticut really worked on yesterday is rebounding. As you can see, quite a game between number one versus number two. That last foul was called on Latina Davis, not Tiffany Johnson. Davis with two fouls along with Dana Johnson. So Tennessee getting into foul trouble early. This is a big game for them, maybe nothing unusual for them. Look at this no fear schedule. They played open up against Louisiana Tech, played Stanford at home in a number one, number two matchup, blew them out. And then you end up with going to Colorado, the biggest crowd there, then going to Montana, going to Texas, Vanderbilt, LSU, playing all these teams on the road and playing Auburn Saturday night on the road as well. Robin, they've played eight ranked teams so far. Only two of them have been at home, but they haven't faced a team like Connecticut yet. They haven't faced a team with a kind of inside strength as well as perimeter strength. Colorado is the, is the team that comes to mind to me that would most resemble this Connecticut team, but I think Connecticut is, is deeper and more talented in each position. 15 to go, Connecticut by five, and the key to sale for freshman driving hard to the goal. You think the freshman's getting a little too happy about playing number one? She has come off the bench to score in double figures in all 12 Connecticut games. The one area that Tennessee has struggled with is their half-court offense. They have not put together a consistent attack in the game. Sometimes they stagnate. Tiffany Johnson, too hard. Robin, they look so much for the inside game. It's almost an afterthought when they take an outside shot, and that's why if there's an attitude of acceptance that an outside shot is okay that they need to establish to be able to get that consistent half-court game. Davis with her third foul this early on. She's going to have to take a, sit, a seat. And Michelle Johnson coming in to replace her, the first Lady Vol to wear double zero. She's only playing in her fifth game, had chronic knee problems, and had to be activated. She got the ball at the top of the key and had to put the ball on the floor and then that pass around around the body of the defender. Mulligan the freshman. Milligan too hard. Lobo handling the ball to the freshman. Rosati for three. Battling the boards. McCray comes down with it. And quickly pushes it up court. And Tennessee will turn over the ball. Rosati a little bit out of control, called for charging. That is Rosati's first foul. As we take a look at some team comparisons, Connecticut number one in the country in scoring 95 points. But look at the rebound margin, Mina. And some would say that, that Connecticut's schedule hasn't been up to the par that Tennessee's has been, and that's why the differential in those numbers. But as you watch Connecticut play today, they're obviously legitimate. They're at least the number two in the country. Tennessee only one turnover, Connecticut with four. <laughs> Tiffany will take it. <laughs> the Cray, the rebound. <laughs> Very active player, Nikki McRae. And she has to be. The Tennessee interior game, Von Ward and Tiffany Johnson right now have got to get more active on the boards. They have not done a good job as yet rebounding on this offensive end. They're getting one shot and that's it. And again, that's something that Connecticut worked on yesterday in practice. Gina Oriema says, look, their first shot, they're gonna make probably 30%. It's the second shot, if you allow them, that they're gonna shoot 60% off. So McRae will step to the line. Carla Berube with her first foul. Tennessee's first free throw attempt, and it's good. 15-7, Connecticut in the lead, 13-24 to go in the first half. McRae with four points in the game. And Tennessee with full court pressure. Pat Summit told us yesterday that she's really gonna pick her spots with this full court pressure. It's not something they normally do. Sales, no. Tiffany Johnson, the rebound. 
Marciniak trying to make things happen, but they'll stay Tennessee's ball. Michelle Marciniak is only going to be able to make things happen if her teammates tune in and move to the open spot. She's obviously looking to try to create here with a penetration dribble, but this is where a post player has got to step into the clearing instead of the Connecticut player doing that. Connecticut in the 2 3 zone again. This would promote the outside shooting for Tennessee. McCray. Tennessee very cold from the field. And they seem almost cautious, don't they, when they take that corner shot? Lobo down to Jamel Elliott. Fonda Ward the rebound. Fifteen eight Connecticut. <laughs> Tiffany Johnson turn around. Lobo call for the foul. Well, as we talked about earlier, Mimi, injuries have been costly for Tennessee. Three times this year, they've had to go with only eight players. Nikki McRae was out six games. Dana Johnson, a shoulder injury, you see it wrapped, but she did not miss any action. Tiffany Woosley hopes to come back for the regionals and the Final Four if they advance that far. She had a devastating knee injury. She petitioned to be redshirted. She could not. And so she was working hard in rehab to get back to join the team. Robin, before all the injuries, Tennessee was a legitimate 10 players deep. They lost nothing when they substituted. Now they're more like eight players deep, and, they're, and they're, they've been brought back to earth with the rest of the teams in the country. Kind of level the playing field yeah. a little bit. Gina Oriema told us yesterday that if anybody thinks that Tennessee's not the number one team in the country, they're crazy. But I think these injuries have been the great equalizer. Johnson with four points, bringing Tennessee back to within five. 12 and a half to go. Marciniak causing the steal. All alone to the layup. We talked about Marciniak being the spark for this team, and she's done that for them all season. In the Louisiana Tech game down there, she scored 19 points in the second half, not only to keep them in the game, but to win the game. Tennessee had all, gone almost five minutes without scoring from the field. Tennessee on a 6-0 run. Sales looking, she'll take the three. She wanted to pass it, couldn't find anybody, so she nailed it herself. When in doubt, jack it up. Already with five points. And that's the attitude of acceptance that this Connecticut team has about their outside shooting. Anybody can take the perimeter shot, including the three point. Vonda Ward in the paint. Battling for the rebound is Jamel Elliott. Oh. A little too fast. And Tennessee has gotten back in it. They're down by six, thanks to the hustling play of Mar Michelle Marciniak. We're talking about Husky Mania. One of the radio stations in Hartford, WTIC, was doing a promotion, a ticket giveaway, and they asked their audience to send in how many proper names can be made from Re Rebecca Lobo's name. In 45 <laughs> minutes, they got over 80 faxes, and they awarded tickets to some woman whose husband said, you better take me or that's it. That's great. <laughs> Dana Johnson down low. And again, a foul on Connecticut. It's Walter's first foul. And by the way, Robin, that woman happened to make up 75 names from Rebecca. <laughs> from the letters in Rebecca Lobo's. Eight thousand and then some here at Gamble Pavilion. Always a good job of packing the place to watch the Huskies. Dana Johnson steps to the line. They're packing the place and they'll head the car and drive about, oh, 30, 35 minutes to Hartford to watch the men play on ESPN tonight against Georgetown. Gina Oriema has done a fantastic job in building this program and getting a fan base of 6,000. They sell over 6,000 season tickets for the and women's basketball team. One of the ways he's accomplished that is by using homegrown talent. He's brought a lot of kids right here from Connecticut, Massachusetts, and the Northeast, and that's what brings the fans in. I, don't, I can't remember another program in the country that, that draws this well for both their men's and women's programs. Marciniak inbounds to McCray down low to Dana Johnson. <laughs> Having a tough night. 
Carol Walters with the rebound. It feels like night. <laughs> Tough day. Again, McCray with the steal. Creating something, but is called for walking. That's still a good sign for Tennessee. Nikki McCray has got to spark the offense by doing it with her defense, and she's quick enough on the floor. She's usually on the on the opponent's best ball handler to try to create something like this. That is only Tennessee's second turnover of the game. Connecticut has seven already. It's a six-point lead for Connecticut. Jamel Elliott for three. A battle underneath, and Elliott picks it up. And she will do that time and time again. If you don't put a body on her, she will go to the board. You mentioned yesterday you thought she was one of the most underrated of the players on the Connecticut team. That's her fourth point. Dana Johnson, a strong move to the goal. That was a great move under Kara Walters at 6-7. She knew she had to get between her and the basket to slip that one in. That's just Johnson's first field goal of the game. Zani looking underneath. A little quick there, perhaps, but the possession arrow in favor of Tennessee. Summit, 546 victories. What can you say about all that she has done at Tennessee and for women's basketball, for that matter? She started coaching at Tennessee. This has been her only job when she was 22. This is her 21st year at the helm and, and has just set the standard for programs in the country. 100% graduation rate and the same here at Connecticut. Gino Oriema, every freshman he has recruited that has played for him, they have gone on to get their degree. Under 10 to go, a six-point lead for Connecticut. Dana Johnson again battling and hits the baseline. Tough baseline, Jay. That's a, cre a credit to the, her ability to be able to score inside. She shot that over three players, one of whom was 6'7", Kara Walters. Connecticut's lead down to four. Pressing defense from Tennessee, but Jim Rosati just keeps her dribble alive. But quickly, it's Tennessee on the other end. McCray. Lobo getting great position for the rebound. Nikki McCray right now is really shooting the ball flat. She's getting no arc on the ball, and as a result, you can see each of her shots is hitting the front rim. And because of that, what she needs to do is just lift the shot a little bit, get a little more arc. Abby Conklin called for her first foul. She'll take a seat. Tiffany Johnson will come back in. You see the time remaining, 22-16, Connecticut in the lead. They were down by four quickly, but have since battled back. Walters can't hang on to it. Tennessee very deliberate. Down low to Tiffany. Blocked by Walters. Jim Rosati feeds Barupi. And Marciniak called for the foul. This Connecticut team runs the ball so well. It's been a while since I've seen a team that is as comfortable in their transition game as they are in their half court game. Connecticut puts it all together. And they are able to block shots with these twin towers. And it's funny because Gina Oriema told his post players yesterday, I don't want both of you. I don't want one coming over and helping. You, you have to stay apart. Let the guards do the helping. Yet there was Kara Walters coming across for the block. Watch it out! 22-16, Connecticut. 8.23 left to go in the first half. Carla Barubi was a starter last year as a freshman for this team. Has resigned herself to come off the bench and contribute any way she can for this team. And she does play well in big games. And a turnover there by Tennessee. Marciniak passed the ball, but 
the team wasn't looking. That's only their third turnover of the game. Latina Davis will come back in for Nikki McRae. Abby Conklin comes in. I think after that turnover, it's timely to talk about the fact that Tennessee played Auburn, then got back to Knoxville at about 1 o'clock in the morning, then had to board a plane at 11.40 yesterday to come up here. Pat Summit stayed up to do the team's uniform. She Get did out. the wash and let, let the managers take a break, and she was up until 4 in the morning doing that, so there's a little fatigue factor here. Jamel Elliott. She'll take the three. And steps called. Good defense by Tennessee. We'll get the ball back. That is Connecticut's 10th turnover. Less than eight minutes to go. It's a seven point lead for Connecticut. Back here at Gamble Pavilion, Connecticut holding a seven point lead over number one and undefeated Tennessee. But Connecticut has been turning the ball over. You see there, 10 turnovers as compared to only three for Tennessee, but yet, Mimi, they're making their shots. But I would caution them to think back to their North Carolina game last year in the East Regional Final, where they had 30 turnovers, Robin, and shot 55% and still lost by 10. So they do need to take care of the basketball from this point forward if they hope to win this game. Defense! Tennessee slowing it down a bit. The ball is kicked to Jim Rosati. Davis trying to force it inside. Jamel Elliott for three. Rolobo with the rebound back out to Sales. Who gets her own rebound. Lobo for three. Abby Conklin, the big rebound. Seven point lead. A turnover. Nope. Saying the ball was kicked. And so it will remain Tennessee's ball. They thought they had the turnover, but no, it was kicked, so it's Tennessee's ball. They're down by seven. Just over seven minutes left to go in the first half. Pat Summit throwing players in and out, I think, to try to keep her players fresh. They they are tired. There's no question about it. And the turnover. Jim Rosati out front and converts. That matches Connecticut's largest lead. Rosati with 10 points in the first half. I'll tell you, it was still smart for Tiffany Johnson not to try to block that shot because she could have gotten in, in a foul trouble situation. And Tennessee can ill afford to lose some of their post players. Look at how much room Rebecca Lobo is giving Tiffany Johnson. She can have all day out there. They said they will give her a perimeter shot. That is Marciniak. Long rebound to Rosati. Quickly to Ruby. Oh, she really kept good control of her body there. That is their largest lead of the game. 11-point lead for Connecticut as they take Welcome back to Gampole Pavilion, where University of Connecticut enjoys their biggest lead of the game so far. Robin, right now Tennessee is really flat. They're not moving for the ball, and they're allowing Connecticut to play easy defense on them. Rosati steals the ball, but look at the foot race between Tiffany Johnson and Rosati. Tiffany Johnson showing a lot of poise there by not trying to block that shot and going after a foul situation. Connecticut on a 7 0 run, the last 245. Rosati with 10 points. So you see their field goal presented today as compared to the season. Lori Milligan, the freshman, back in for Tennessee to run the offense. Down low to Tiffany Johnson. Good look. For six points. Sales quickly down the other end and banks it in. Lori Milligan did a nice job of positioning. Connecticut got away there. That should have been a, a charge. Already seven points for the Connecticut freshman Sales. Now look at the way the Tennessee players are just standing around, Robin.
Nice pass. Good. And Johnson converts eight points for her. She's coming on quickly now. Lori Milligan has done a nice job of, of seeing the court since she's been in. I think the big move was the big walk, to be yeah. honest with you. That extra step there. Latina Davis moving on the other end and gets the roll. Back down to a seven-point lead now for Connecticut. Under five minutes to go. Lobo, the sweet pass to Sales, too hard. Crashing underneath. Sales takes a seat. Under five to go. A seven-point lead for Connecticut. Abby Conklin will take the three and converts. Abby Conklin has averaged more three-point shots. She's averaging over four a game, more than even the guards. For Ruby keeping it alive, looking for Lobo, but quick hands and movement by Tennessee's defense. And that defense has increased their intensity in the last couple of possessions. It's a four-point lead for Connecticut. Lobo down, but will go with the left hand. So versatile. So smooth, too, with that movement. Oh, and then underneath the goal, Tennessee stepped in. It's going to be Connecticut's ball, a costly turnover. Pat Summit, none too happy about that. The old lob to Walters. Can't power it up. Conklin with the rebound. Conklin for three again. Lobo the rebound. Her fourth rebound. Down low to Walters. The little hook doesn't go, but Elliott working the boards. This Connecticut team has so many offensive weapons. That's why it's hard to key on any one player. But Ruby hard to the goal. We mentioned already that they have five players in double figures as well. And Baruby with five points. It's back to an eight-point lead for Connecticut. Tennessee needs to look to mix up their offensive attack. They've shot from the outside a couple of times. Now go inside and see if we can't clear some. Milliken is blocked by Walters. is definitely flat. There is no life in their legs right now. It looked like it was going to be the turnover, but then Elliott called for the foul. That is her second foul. And Pat Summit has some words of wisdom for her. Nikki McRae steps to the line. Her team down by 10. Nikki McRae used to be thought of as only a defensive specialist for this Tennessee team, but she's really worked hard to improve and expand her offensive game and has done so to the point of being their leading scorer. Five points, three for three from the line. Nikki McRae. She's a quiet leader. She leads by example. Dana Johnson is more a vocal leader, but Nikki McRae, believe me, the players look to her for her example on the floor. Sales up top, down low to Walters. And again, that's what Pat Summit wanted to prevent, that pass from the high post. Robin, the post players at Connecticut have hands like a four-year-old that just got done with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Everything sticks to them. They've got great hands. I have to say, I've never heard that analogy before. <laughs> well, that's because I have that's because I have a two-year-old and a seven-year-old. I've been know. through it. But this is it. And look at the way she's able to hold on to that ball and establish she's got great footwork, too. Walters has done a great deal to improve her game. And credit Le Rebecca Lobo with the improvement of Kara Walters because of the way she's worked with her. She is the tallest player in the Big East, standing six feet, seven inches. With that height, she still has a good touch at the line. And her father is in the Boston College Hall of Fame and played 
for a brief stint with the Seattle Supersonics. Back up to 10 points, a 10-point lead for Connecticut. Two and a half to go in the half. Abby Conklin will take the three. Fouling underneath. Scramble. And finally, jump ball is called, and the possession arrow is in favor of Connecticut. We're going to see that quite a bit. Two physical teams, they will not be shy about getting on the floor and going after that basketball. The number one ranking is on the line. In fact, the Associated Press is holding off on the voting until after this game. So the winner of this game will be number one. Either Connecticut will be number one for the first time or Tennessee will hang on. The turnover quickly to Marciniak. That's the first time in the 19-year history of the poll that they've done that, held off the poll for a, t a game like this. This full court pressure is a good idea by Tennessee, except it's really going to wear on them with the fatigue they already have. Marciniak quickly off the court. The Johnson underneath. Steps are called. Boy, it's amazing when you turn around and you see somebody 6'7", just how intimidating that can be. Sales having problem with the ball. Holding the ball, but comes out with it to Kim Better, who's been inserted in the lineup. And Sales is called for traveling. You got to love a freshman with the spirit of Sales. She's not afraid to take a look at the basket. She's not afraid to put it up. And that's the attitude of acceptance that I've talked about with this Connecticut team. Everybody has the green light here, and they know that they can make a, a few mistakes. They can miss a few buckets, but they're still able to continue to look to the basket for the perimeter shot. Welcome for three. And Connecticut controls the rebound. One of the big differences in this game has been the second chance points. Connecticut has done a, a good job on the offensive board. Tennessee, on the other hand, has not been able to get the second and third shot that they usually get. Johnson can't go. McCray goes back up high and is called. A foul is called on the play, so McCray will go back to the line. The Connecticut post players are arguably the most formidable, formidable attack inside in the country. Kara Walters has done a tremendous job of developing her talents. When she came in, she told Rebecca Loba that, hey, you're going to be my role model. I want to be as good as you when I get to be a senior, and I need your help. And Rebecca took her under her wing and has really worked with her. She had a tremendous summer this year playing on, with the national team. Tara Vanderveer at Stanford was coaching the Goodwill team and the World Championship team, and Kara was the youngest player on that world championship team. She's also on the Big East All-Rookie Team, an All-Tournament Team, the NCAA East Regional All-Tournament Team. She really came on at the end of last year, and as you said, Mimi, a great summer she had. McCray's first miss from the line. You want to talk about some great numbers. This Tennessee senior class, 104 and 8 and they are undefeated at home since they've been at Tennessee. You know, everyone puts so much emphasis on the Final Four, the Final Four. As Pat Summit told us yesterday, that doesn't mean that this still isn't the best class ever at Tennessee. They can't measure themselves by whether or not they make the Final Four. Marciniak comes up with it, yet they don't want to go down in history as the first senior, <laughs> yeah, exactly. senior class from Tennessee not to have Final Four experience. No, that's yeah. something they don't want. Under a minute to go, nine-point lead for Connecticut. Across to MJ, Michelle Johnson. Hits the three, and a foul underneath called on Vonda Ward, getting position for the rebound, knocking down Jamel Elliott, and that's no easy task. You know, Tennessee has had such a tough time getting a run going. They'll do something good one time, and then they can't back it up with another. And here, even when they make a shot, there's something bad that happens to them. They're just not clicking today. The three-point counts. Six-point lead for Connecticut. As Jamel Elliott, a very good free-throw shooter, will step to the line. Pat Summit always coaching, always talking. Her team will look over to her almost like to bail them out. What do we do now? Rosati takes a seat, under a minute to go, some rest. 
You know, Jamil Elliott, we talked about her being a good free throw shooter, but her numbers from the field are also incredible. She's shooting 57% from the floor, but 88% from the three-point line at six feet. She's made eight for nine from three-point line this year. That's her seventh point of the game. And it's a seven point lead for Connecticut. She was very vocal in practice yesterday when we were watching. She seems to be the spiritual leader, the spirit leader of this team. She is very vocal and very encouraging with her teammates. Walters seems to be having a slight problem. Now if there's blood there, then they have got to sub. They cannot leave her in the game. And that's what they're calling for, a sub. And the Tennessee bench is yelling for a sub. And also, if they're going to take that much time, they need to call a timeout. Now, I didn't see if there was blood or not. There is a wrap on her leg, but I did not, I could not tell if there was blood. But they are making her the officials, making her take a seat. And Kim Better comes in. 39 seconds left to go in the first half. Connecticut by seven. They were down quickly by four, but have battled back, enjoyed as much as a, an 11-point lead. Another turnover by Tennessee. The turnover situation is something that Pat Summon is having a hard time adjusting to herself. This team has turned over the ball more than any other team in Tennessee history. And it's because they're trying to do different things. They're trying to be more of an up-tempo team. And yet, that's something that comes along with it. You usually do have more turnovers when you're a transition team. Walters back in quickly. Michelle Johnson back in for Tennessee. See the clock differential with the shot clock. Foul called away from the ball on Vonda Ward. That is her second foul. <laughs> Pat can't believe it. She's played the toughest schedule in the country, and I don't think she's seen it called quite this closely yet. But as Rosati operates from the top, you can see Kara Walters and the position she's trying to get with Vonda Ward now. Really, that's just a little bit of body checking, and, and that, in my opinion anyway, is a no call. Walters is at the line. She has scored six points, one rebound, two blocks. She's two for two from the line. And Jamel Elliott goes out. 12.7 seconds left to go in the first half. Abby Conklin back in. Ward will take a seat. Robin, with Abby Conklin back in, let's watch and see if she doesn't take a three-point shot to close the half. Pavilion, the Connecticut Huskies up 41 to 33. They're an eight point lead at the half as they take the court, getting ready for the second half. Mimi Griffin, of course, is with me as well. And let's look back a little bit at the first half. Tennessee just not really able to convert from the field. I think the big difference in these two teams, Robin, is comfort. Connecticut is obviously comfortable in their half court offense, and they can also run the ball when they want to. Tennessee is just off half a step, and I don't know if it's the fatigue factor or what's going on, but they're just not playing their game. They have had quite a road trip, uh, but they said they got to get up every game, which is sometimes difficult to do, and maybe it's showing a little bit in their play. And there's a couple of things. With Abby Conklin shooting the three from the outside, that's a great idea, and she had plenty of time and plenty of room. But shoot it like you mean it. Shoot it like you think it's going to go in. On the other hand, Connecticut, yeah, Rebecca Lobo at 6'4", 
passing the ball as well as their point guard. Look at the feed in here to Kara Walters. They work so well together. It's the toughest post combination in the country as far as I'm concerned. And then Jennifer Rosati applying the spark from the point guard position. Here's a good defense by Sales. And look at Rosati within a foot race with Tiffany Johnson. She's just going to go. She knows she's got a 6'6 six, six, six player chasing her. She doesn't care. She's taking it up. And Rosati has 10 points at the half. Quite a surprise for Connecticut. They lead by eight. The second half about to get underway between Connecticut and the top-ranked Tennessee Lady Vols. Let's take a look, Mimi, at some of the first-half stats. Some of the areas pretty even, Robin, but look at the field goal percentage with Connecticut obviously shooting better from the, from the field. Three-point attempts have been pretty even. The rebounding situation, though, is where Connecticut really has an advantage, and they've done a nice job, and, and a lot of times it's been on the offensive end, so they've been able to get second and third shots. Both, though, in double figures and turnovers. Tennessee controlling the ball in the second half. And quickly, quickly scoring. Now watch Tennessee go back to their strengths. Number one is the inside with Tiffany Johnson and Dana Johnson. But watch their defense. I'll bet the intensity is just a notch higher than what we saw in the first half. Tiffany Johnson, that was her 10th point. This is similar to what happened in the Bandy game where they played a, a lackluster first half and then came out the second half really intense. In and out for Rebecca Lobo. Quickly down the court to Latina Davis. He can't hang on with it, hang on to it. And another turnover just like that. It's Connecticut's ball. Now it's going to be important that Connecticut come out just as strong as they did in the first half. You can see Latina Davis trying to force the action. That's not what Tennessee needs right now. It's a six-point lead for Connecticut. Player to player, tough defense. Lobo gets loose down low and scores her just her seven point. Quickly, Tennessee comes down the court. McCray. Of course, the partisan crowd feels that it was a block, but <laughs> Walters called with the foul. That is her second. Well, you know what's interesting is it almost seemed like that whistle was blown before Kara Wallace even blocked the shot. I thought it was on another player, maybe with the body, but it was called on Kara Wallace. And so Nikki McRae will step to the line. I don't think Pat ever sits down. She just keeps <laughs> working that sideline. No, but you can tell, you know, even on the faces of the coaching staff, this schedule has taken its toll. At practice yesterday, they, they were visibly tired, and they, I mean, admittedly so. Who wouldn't be tired after the kind of grueling pace they've kept up? But Pat Summit has always believed to be the best, you have to play the best, and she's not afraid to go anywhere to play. Two misses by McCray. She's now five of eight from the line. And she will inbounds for Tennessee. You gotta love the way that player, Jen Lazzotti, plays. She just is so hungry and she hunts every ball game. She is rel rel relentless. Marciniak working on Rosati. You know, Rosati called for the foul. That was a nice call. Hand checking no longer allowed. And, and Jen Rosati trying to push Marciniak off of her path by checking her up. That's Rosati's second personal foul. Marciniak for three. Now that's what I'm talking about when they take that shot. Take it like you mean it. They can shoot that ball. Abby Conklin and Michelle Marciniak are all proficient from the three-point line. Take it with confidence. We know Marciniak can score. She scored over 3,000 points in high school. Yeah, my hometown, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Just setting you up there. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Where'd you say you were from, Robin, so I can set you up? <laughs> Nobody out there where I'm playing. Passion Thompson on the bench for Mississippi for Tennessee. There you go. Philadelphia, Mississippi, no less. Down low, it's Walters. Her eighth point. It's a seven-point lead for Connecticut. You have to be impressed with the way the post players for Connecticut keep the ball high and out of reach of their defenders whenever they receive it. Down low to Johnson. What set that up was a nice flash cut by Dana Johnson. In the first half, the post players were more trying to post up and push people out of the way. Right there, Dana Johnson flash cut and got the ball in the open. Great move. Connecticut's lead down to five. 
Lobo looking for Elliott underneath. It's knocked out of bounds. It will remain Connecticut's ball. Tennessee three for three from the field in the second half. They were cold in the first half, starting off the second half very hot. Sales coming back in, the freshman for Connecticut, Kara Walters going out. Boy, it looks like a little air was taken out of the Connecticut team, too, doesn't it? They're not quite as lively as they were in the first half. But they would control the rebound. Weber over to Rosati for three. <laughs> Trying to save it, and they do to Jamel Elliott. And Rosati will set the offense. <laughs> Elliott spins around. Lobo. You know, how many offensive rebounds can you get in one possession? But she's called out of bounds. It is going to be Tennessee's ball and exactly right, Mimi. This is what Pat Summit is trying to prevent, those second and third and fourth shots that Connecticut is getting. What Connecticut is doing right now on the boards that Tennessee is not, they're not only putting a body on, their, on the uh, defender, but they are also running the ball down, and Tennessee is not doing that. Looking down low for Dana Johnson, kicks it out to Latina Davis. And battling under the is Tennessee, but it's going to be Connecticut's ball. Well, the good sign there is you had three orange jerseys. Good time for Tennessee, rather, that you had three orange jerseys at least going after that rebound. Being very aggressive. They are livelier here in the second half. Weber bringing it up. Keeping the dribble alive. Out to Sales for three. And she hits it. Her tenth. Streak continues in double figures. This is her 13th game in double figures. A freshman record here at Connecticut. There are a lot of records being broken this year at Connecticut. Connecticut back up by eight. Marciniak looking down low to Tiffany Johnson. The spin move, no. Johnson rejected. McCray controlling it. Tough to score down low against Connecticut. And Rosati with the steal! And converts. Jen Rosati does such a nice job of controlling the ball and knowing where her defense is, so she goes up on the right side of the basket and protects the ball to the last minute. And the crowd is back in it. Not that they ever really left. <laughs> Down low to Johnson, denied by Lobo! And Rebecca Lobo's mother cheering her daughter on and the Connecticut Huskies to lead back up to 10. Marciniak calls for the foul. That is her second foul. you have any dreams? Uh, well, Dr. King has always inspired me, and he's inspired me to do whatever I've done and do it to my, the best of my ability. And as far as basketball is concerned, I want to go as far with this Connecticut basketball team as I can. And on a personal level, I just want to give back to the young kids as much as the people who, when I was growing up, gave to me. And, and if I can do that, I think I'll be pretty content with myself. And a dream matchup here on Martin Luther King Day, number one versus number two in the media guide. When asked what five people you'd like to have over for dinner, one that Jamel Elliott said, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And she also picked a quote from Dr. King. Each player picked a quote that was special to them, and her quote was, we must use time creatively and forever realize that the time is always right to do right. From Dr. Martin Luther King's letter, January 16, 1963. Connecticut by 10. Lobo for three. Dana Johnson with a good rebounding position. Milligan back in for Tennessee, directing the offense. To Latina Davis for three. Shooting with confidence, Mimi. Great sign right there. Now you saw how much room Connecticut's defense gave Tennessee on the perimeter. Latina Davis has to just light it up just like that. That's her seventh point. 15 minutes left to go. It's a seven-point lead for Connecticut. One of the 
other thing that I think Connecticut does so well is they not only move the ball well, but they move their body. So there's ball movement and body movement. Move the there to Lobo, but again, Tennessee quickly comes back down with it. And Lobo is called for the foul. No fault that was. She jumped back. That is her third foul. And Rebecca Lobo doing it on both ends of the floor. You can see that the basket on one end, and look the way she hustles down in the transition defense, and she's right there to draw, actually to take a foul. You cannot rest against Tennessee. They are so quick, they respond very well, they react quickly in getting the ball down the court. And they have the talent to be a really impressive transition team. They've got great speed on the floor with McCray right now, and Latina Davis, Lori Milligan. Michelle Marciniak is also great in the transition. The rebound, but rejected, and Rosati comes away with it. Down low to Walters, a spin move, the hook. Johnson the rebound. Down again quickly to Latina Davis. Inside to Dana Johnson, who spins and moves, but has a shot blocked by Walters. Goes back up, blocked again. Sales with the rebound. Quickly down to Lobo. Gina Oriema certainly not happy. They're wondering why it's not a shooting foul. The refs say no, she was not in the process of shooting. Well, I don't know that that's right, Robin. I think there's no question she was taking that ball up. You know, when I watched the tape of the Pitt Connecticut game, and the first word I wrote when watching this team is alive. They are really alive offensively. Elliott for three. Milligan runs down the rebound. The crowd thought she was out of bounds. And blocking is going to be called on Jim Rosati. That is Rosati's third foul. She's pleading her case. Connecticut runs with the ball as well as any team I've seen in a while. And you can see, look at Rebecca Lobo. You think she wasn't shooting the ball? She was definitely in the process of shooting the ball. It's an eight-point lead. Davis going hard. Foul called on Connecticut. Penetration is one of the things that Connecticut focused on in their defensive effort yesterday in practice. They wanted to prevent penetration, and the way they did that is they denied the ball, but once their player on the perimeter got the ball, they sagged off, so the player was not able to penetrate. Penetration is what set that foul up, and Latina Davis took good advantage of it. A very costly foul on Rebecca Lobo, her fourth. There's 13 minutes, 46 seconds left to go in the game. A lot of time. With four fouls, she's going to have to take a seat. Latina Davis at the line. One shot. Davis with eight points. It's called out of bounds, and it's going to be Connecticut's ball. Tennessee doing a better job on the offensive boards, though, in the last couple of series. You see this pressure now applied by Tennessee. You know, there's also a look of hope on Pat Summit's face, too. I think she sees a little bit of light here. The light is shining, I think, with Rebecca Lobo Absolutely. on the bench. She got a little grin on her face when that foul was called. Hustling for the ball is Rosati. It's going to be Tennessee's ball. Connecticut enjoying a 27-game winning streak here at Gample Pavilion, and that's why they're able to pack it game in and game out. Over 6,000 season tickets sold to come out and watch 27 straight. They've won here at Gample. They'd love to make a 28 at the expense of top-ranked Tennessee. Taking a look at the Sears Women's Basketball Coaches Association.
Association trophy will go to the number one basketball team as voted on by the members of the Women's Basketball Coaches Association in their final coaches poll. That beautiful trophy on display here at Gamble Pavilion. And many are thinking maybe in April, <laughs> Tennessee or Connecticut will walk home with that trophy. I think Pat's clearing a place on her mantle, or at least she'd like to. If she has room on her mantle yeah. after all that she's won at Tennessee. pressure by Tennessee, or I'm sorry, by Connecticut rather, to try to use up some of the shot clock as well as wear the Tennessee players down even further. McCray gets across quickly half court to Latina Davis. Down low to Dana Johnson, a great baseline move on Walters. Her eighth point. It's a five point lead for Connecticut. Just over 13 minutes to go in the game. Elliot looking down low, Walters fights for it. One of the reasons why you don't want the high post to get the ball is because you can't help down low. There's no help defense here. And she will be called for traveling. Nikki McCray can't believe it. And Pat Summer just said to her, look, don't worry about it. Get down on defense. You're not going to change the call. Yeah, slight hesitation there, and the ref was right on it. Pat Summit sitting in Vonda Ward, but she'll have to wait. 15 turnovers for Tennessee, 14 for Connecticut. Ruby driving, can't get the bounce. Walters. Oh, look at the hands, the hands of Kara Walters. Very soft, but can't get the shooter's bounce. A little bit out of position on that shot. Milligan directing the offense to Tennessee. And a 2-3 zone by Connecticut. Trying to find Tiffany Johnson down low. She's boxed up. So it goes to Jim Rosati and Milligan is called for the foul. That is her first foul. You know, in that 2-3 zone, they're just allowing so much room on the perimeter. And Lori Milligan is not even looking for the basket as an option. So Tiffany Johnson will take a seat, as will Milligan. Earlier, we were telling you about Tennessee, excuse me, Connecticut having a 27-game home winning streak. Well, Tennessee has already snapped two long winning streaks. Colorado earlier in the year had won 30 straight at home before Tennessee came to town. La Tech last Monday had won 19. But Tennessee brought that to an end. Sales, the baseline, Jay. And just a 12 point. Excuse me, Robin, just to complete that, Tennessee owns a 54-game win streak at home themselves. Marciniak back in. That's what Marciniak does so well. She creates off the dribble, both for herself and her teammates. Her ninth point. She does keep the ball alive, does not pick up the dribble. Hands off, hands off. Down low to Walters. She backs in on Vonda Ward, but again, denied. And Ward throws it out of bounds. And so it'll be another turnover for Tennessee. Connecticut's ball. And you can see Tennessee top in the nation in home court winning streak with Virginia second, Connecticut third. Ruby trying the dipsy doodle underneath. Denied. And then Vonda Ward is called for the foul on Ruby. That is her third foul. And Baruby doing a nice job of just taking that baseline when it's offered to her. But look at the second and third effort of this Connecticut team. Now that's what's been the difference in this game is the fact that they're not just getting one, but they're getting two and three shots at the basket. And Tennessee cannot afford to get into foul trouble. Davis has three fouls. Ward has three. Baruby at the line. She has five points in the game. Now you want to talk about unselfish. Carla Barubi was on the 1994 Big East All-Rookie team. She started last year as a freshman for a very successful Connecticut team, has been relegated to the bench as, as a sixth player, and has accepted that role very willingly, just so that the team can be better. The team concept alive and well here at Connecticut. Funny how that works, isn't it, right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Down quickly to McCray. Too hard. Sales knocks it out of bounds, so it's going to remain Tennessee's ball. It's a seven-point lead, just over 11, 11 minutes to go in the game. Seven-point lead for Connecticut. 
They were down very early in the game, but pretty much have had things their way since. And Jamel Elliott taking it on the chin, literally, you can see, as Michelle Johnson's going after the rebound, Jamel took it, took a fist on her chin. Marciniak for three. Crashing hard at the boards is Nikki McCray, but no. It's going to be a foul on Tennessee and Connecticut's ball. And Pat Summit can't believe it. She can't get one break underneath. They're calling it very closely on her post defense. And that is McCray's first personal foul. McCray's first of the game. Tennessee, Marciniak. Sometimes it's feast or famine with Mar Michelle Marciniak. She can do so much with the ball, but sometimes tries to do too much and will turn over the ball. At that point, it was best that she just pick up her dribble rather than try the, sp the spin move. Oh. It's important to point out that Michelle Marciniak is playing in a new role. She was not really the point guard last year. Kara Walters with a nice spin move of her own. And you saw she was very aggressive with her move. A nine point lead for Connecticut as we approach the 10 minute mark. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Dana Johnson down low working on Walters. Oh, strong move. Her 10 point. And the turnover by Connecticut. Michelle Johnson controlling the ball for the Lady Balls. Looking for Michelle Marciniak. And they're going to slow it down just a bit. Seven point lead for Connecticut. McCray hard to the goal. Johnson the rebound. You know what's really impressive about this team, Robin, is that you get the feeling that Tennessee's not quite on top of their game this afternoon, yet they're only five points down against the number two team in the nation. That's, that's incredible. And the number two team in the nation wants to take a timeout and think things over with a five-point lead under 10 minutes left to go, one versus number two. Tennessee has fought back. Just a five-point lead now for Connecticut. Tennessee... The last time that they lost during the regular season have to go back to almost a year ago at Rutgers, and they had won 14 straight at that point and then lost to Rutgers. And the interesting thing, they had defeated Auburn in Knoxville before heading west or east to play Rutgers. They played Auburn Saturday at Auburn's place, beat them before coming here to the East Coast. So they're not uh, hoping for yeah. deja vu in that case. Yeah, I don't, I'm hoping, they're hoping it's not a, a sign. And Connecticut hasn't lost here at Gamble since the NCAA tournament in 93 against Louisville. They've won 27 in a row since. Rebecca Lobo back in the game with four fouls. Now this is a big gamble, but it's, it's a smart one, I think, for Gino Oriema because basketball is a game of momentum and Tennessee was definitely taking the momentum. Kara Walters now with 14 points. You're gonna see Rebecca Lobo not just score, but do what she just did and feed the ball into Kara Walters and her teammates. A seven-point lead for Connecticut. Johnson all the way across to Marciniak. Dangerous pass. Marciniak tries, but she has her shot blocked, and Connecticut controlling the ball. Keisha Sales. or rather the pass deflected by Dana Johnson. It will remain Connecticut's ball. Milligan comes back in. Marciniak goes out. Milligan will run the offense for the Tennessee Lady Balls. While Lobo was out, Tennessee went on a 9-6 run. Now this shows some of the strength and tenacity Ooh. as well as aggressiveness. Wow. Talk about taking it on the chin. <laughs> Walters, she's really developed a nice little hook shot. 
sometimes she doesn't quite finish it. Yeah, well, you know who she got that from, don't you? Oh, gee, could it be <laughs> Rebecca Lobo, perhaps? You know, this situation is very similar to the situation at Vandy where Angela Gorsica came in so that she could play behind Heidi Gillingham and learn while she was still there. And now Gorsica has really come into her own and, and is playing very well for the Lady Commodore. Vonda Ward, that was her fourth foul. Walters at the line with 12 points already today. Kara Walters only a 44% free throw shooter, and yet she's doing quite well this afternoon. Excuse me, that was her 15th point. Make that 16. Boy, with that kind of a stroke, it's hard to imagine why she's only shooting 44% from the line. Connecticut opting for this 2-3 zone has been pretty successful all, all game. Down low to Dana Johnson. Kara Walters gets a piece of it. Connecticut on the run. Connecticut back up by nine. Just under eight minutes to go in the game. Looking down underneath. Knocked around. Lobo comes up with it. And scores. the gamble you take by putting Rebecca Lobo back in with four fouls. That's what she needed to bring to this Connecticut team. And they have matched their highest lead, 11-point lead for Connecticut. Vonda Ward, no. Latina Davis trying to keep it alive. Dana Johnson working underneath. Jump ball will be called. The possession arrow in favor of Connecticut. Rebecca Lobo brings so much to this team, some of it in intangible, but a lot of it very tangible, like steals and like putbacks right here. She's just so aggressive and so mobile. At 6'4", you forget how tall she is because of how well she moves on the floor. It's an 11-point lead, seven minutes to go. The number one ranking on the line. And Lobo is called for traveling. It'll be Tennessee's ball. Now, if Connecticut stays in this 2-3 zone, there are so many openings. It's so wide open, but what the guards have to do is penetrate a little bit to create the gap, and then the post players have got to step into the open areas, not just stand there, but flash cut in there. Davis to McCray. Wants to go across to Davis. A There's cutting Dana cut. Johnson, just like you said. But she has three people on her, and it's going to be called for walking. What you can't do is that flash cut was perfect, and Dana Johnson executed it very well. But then you can't hold on to the ball. Things aren't just automatically going to open up for you. If it's not open up, get the ball out again. Throw it out, kick it out, and, and move the ball around the perimeter. You've got to get rid of the Tennessee, their 21st turnover. Connecticut going for their biggest lead. Keisha Sales! Over the backboard, it will be Tennessee's ball. And Marciniak coming back in. Milligan, the freshman, going out. Now watch for Marciniak to put the ball up from the outside. I'll bet Pat Summit talked to her about diversity in their offensive attack. Still a good bit of time. Just over six minutes left to go. Oh, there's plenty of time in this basketball game. McCray. The senior comes in for the big shot. She has 10 points. Now, Tennessee has to gamble some and try to create some things from their defense in order to give them back the momentum. Marciniak trying to tip the ball from behind, but it's called for the foul. She has three fouls now in the game. Something else about the senior class from Tennessee. They've been involved in the number one versus number two matchup four times. They are four and zero. Oh. When it's that case, this is the fifth game that they've been involved in, so they're used to the pressure cooker. Three of those games were against Stanford, one against Vanderbilt. Rebecca Lobo steps to the line, a very good free throw shooter. We almost feel like you need to whisper. <laughs> the place gets so silent, you feel like if you talk, you're going to ruin the spell. 
Lobo now with 12 points. Hey, I also want to make the point that Rebecca's mother, Ruth Ann, was also a high school basketball star at Medfield High School in Massachusetts. She converts them both. Back up to an 11-point lead for Connecticut. Davis trying to make something happen to Tiffany Johnson. There's the penetration that opened things up. She drew the defense to her and was able to give the hand off to Johnson. And you can sense that Tennessee is not panicking. They know that there's still a lot of time, five and a half minutes left to go. They're down by nine. You would not expect a veteran team like this, and especially with what they've gone through, to panic, but they do have to play some defense. Jan Rosani, the big three. She has 15 points. And Connecticut enjoying its biggest lead up by 12. Nikki McRae. Down low to Dana Johnson. The Ruby out front. Decides to slow it down, Rebecca Lobo. Oh, that will be her fifth foul. Oh. What a way to get your fifth. She will have to take a seat with just under five minutes left to go in the ball game. And she is going to get her team together. This is the chance you take once again with not only putting her into the game, but also letting her just operate the way she normally does. She can put the ball on the floor. Great positioning by the Tennessee defense. And she has a thing or two to say to her team before she goes out. And she goes out with her mom, Ruth Ann, looking on with 13 points, eight rebounds, and five block shots. Not bad. Yeah, but I want to make the point again that this Connecticut basketball team is not just the Rebecca Lobo show. They've got five players in double figures. They have been in this position before. They are so supportive. There's no question what their motivation is, Robin. They play for each other. You can just feel it when you watch them play and when you see them practice. Marciniak, foul underneath. Okay, even though Marciniak missed that shot, it's still a good thing for her to take that shot. Dana Johnson called for the foul, her third foul for Pat Summit. It is 69-57, Connecticut in the lead. 36 left to go. And Jamel Elliott steps to the line. Latina <laughs> Davis the rebound. Nikki McCray will be called for travel. You know, Tennessee right now, there are a lot of calls that they feel are not going their way. It's going to be critical that they just shake this off. They can't blame anything on the officiating. They have plenty of time to get back in this game. And knowing Pat Summit, she won't let this team dwell on what's going on with the, with the uh, officiating. 23 turnovers now by Tennessee, 17 for Connecticut. Jim Rosati looking for Kara Walters. Kara Walters got away with a walk right there. Down low to Tiffany Johnson. Good luck by Marciniak and great filling the lanes by Tiffany jo Johnson. Back down the 10 point lead for Connecticut. Tennessee applying that pressure. They get it across. Now Connecticut needs to use the clock as their ally and work for a good shot. Move the ball around like they normally do. Don't be too concerned about putting it up too quickly. Connecticut has a 10-point lead. They've got Down to low. That's a shot they want. High percentage. Ball's in the right hands with Walters. Carol Walters now with 18 points of passing. Her 
season high is 20, and Walters now with 18. We've got number one versus number two, the Associated Press rankings. They will not vote for this week until after this game. The winner will be number one. Connecticut could be number one for the first time in school history. They're up by 12 points. Three minutes, 26 seconds left to go. Rebecca Lobo has fouled out. They're going the rest of the way without her. And Kara Walters has really stepped up her play with 16, excuse me, 18 points so far for Connecticut. Robin, it's important to point out that all three of the losses of the top five teams came at the hands of Tennessee. Two for Louisiana Tech, one for Stanford. Pat Summit talking over matters with her fine coaching staff, Holly Warlick, Mickey DeMoss, Carolyn Peck. Pat Summit has been in this position before. She oh, knows yeah. not only how to keep her cool, but how to translate that to the players as well to help them understand they've got the time, they just need to do some things effectively. Three minutes left to go. And one of the effective things needs to be some steals off their defense. They can't trade possessions with Connecticut. Gambling on their defense, but Kara Walters is able to get it, but McCray comes down with the rebound. Marciniak to spin move. They're going hard to the boards. And Baruby is called for the foul. Dana Johnson all over the boards right now. And, and they've no time is be. beginning to run out. They've got to be. If they're not going to make that first shot, they've got to get a second and third. They have to crash the boards like they haven't done this entire game. That is Baruby's third personal foul. I also think the Tennessee attack, again, has to be diversified for them to make up this deficit in the two minutes and 40 seconds. They've got to hit some threes, some perimeter shots, as well as feed the ball inside. Dana Johnson steps to the line. She's 0 for 2 from the free throw line in this game. Oh, that's a big shot. You're 0 for 2, you step to the line, the place is going nuts, you're a senior, you nail it. And this is where you have to make every point count as Rebecca Lobo. Oh, you know she wants, to be, uh, she wants to be in this game right now. It's a 10-point lead for Connecticut. About two and a half left to go. Now, this is where it doesn't matter how tired you are. You have to do your gut check, and you got to go after it. We're taking care of the ball. <laughs> what did I just say? Keisha Shells was not listening. Gives up the ball. Tennessee with the... Oh, Jim Rosati. So quick. Almost caused a turnover, but it was going to remain Tennessee's ball. And Jim Conklin going out. Michelle Johnson coming in as Gino Oriema directing his team. Pat Summit always working. A three-er. Can't get it to fall. And Baruby controlling it for Connecticut. A wraparound to Jamel Elliott. Now, you saw the way Jamel Elliott took the time to gather herself and shoot that ball with confidence. She didn't rush it. Her That's the difference points. with this Connecticut team. Michelle Marciniak for three. Oh, my goodness. I tell you, with a three-point shot these days, there isn't a lead that's safe. That's a nine-point lead for Connecticut. A minute and a half to go. Marciniak called for blocking. That is her fourth foul. Connecticut, but that could be reversed. In another minute, 25 seconds, Connecticut knocking on the door. Number one. 
I love the way this Jen Rosati plays. She she adds the points, she gives you the points, but she does so many other things that, that are intangible and don't show up on any stat sheet. For instance, the way she took care of the ball today when she had Nikki McCray guarding her the entire game was really impressive with Nikki McCray being one of the best defensive players in the country. She's worked defensively, but also offensively. Rosati with 17 points in the game. Pam Weber will come back in for Connecticut. He can smell it. A minute 25 to go. Marciniak for three. Crashing the boards, Latina Davis. McRae. It's Connecticut's ball. You can see it written all over the Connecticut players' faces. Look at the reactions when those free throws go in. Jamel Elliott. That is Dana Johnson's fourth foul. A minute to go. And it's Connecticut. a great place to play, isn't it? These fans are incredible. I know there's only 8,000-plus 8, 8, fans, but, God, it sounds like it's about 80,000. Elliott, 10 points, 4 rebounds. Gino Ariema, very close to being number one. This game is going to be big. If they're able to pull this out, this will cement in their minds the fact that they belong here. There's always that little hint of a doubt, like, a doubt, like yeah, no, we're number two, we're number two, but are we really number two? They hadn't been tested yet this year. This was their first big test, and they seem to be coming through with flying colors. Yes, they are passing that test. Their biggest lead with under a minute to go, up by 13 over the top-ranked Lady Ball. You know what, though, Robin? A loss is not going to do any harm to Tennessee. They could almost use it to take the pressure off. one out after having to sit the last four minutes on the bench. Pat Summit has been here before. She understands the pressure. She told us earlier that it's very difficult to get up every single game like this when you're playing this kind of competition. Taking nothing away from Connecticut. They have deserved this victory. Davis. It's 11 points. 39 seconds left to go in the game. Nikki McRae is not going to go out quietly. <laughs> not with a whimper, that's for sure. She's trying to keep the ball out of Jen Rosati's hands. But Jen Rosati, if she does get the ball, can keep it alive and dribble the clock away. You know, I was making the point that I really don't think a loss is going to hurt this Tennessee team. A loss should always be a learning experience. And a lot of times when you go along, even when they've had the kind of schedule that Tennessee has played, you still don't necessarily take the time to look back and learn from what you've done. And a loss forces you to do that. still trying to get in the game knowing there are only 22 seconds left they're down by 11 points but Pat Summit realizes you have to play this kind of competition and boy have they this year they said they felt like an NBA expansion team with how many times they've been on the road and the grueling pace that they've kept up. But it is a tribute to this team that they've done as well as they have. And even with this team being the number two team, Connecticut now moving into number one, they've still played very well in this game. You wouldn't think it's 11 point difference the way this game has gone. Rebound. Time expiring. Kara Walters called 
the steps. Nikki McCray.